Members of our Foundation Board of Directors, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the yard. Welcome home. I'm thrilled to be standing here ready to officially unveil our newest state-of-the-art instructional facility. I'm also thrilled that we're able to celebrate the legacy of one of our nation's great admirals and trailblazers, Grace Hopper, with a building named in her honor. Admiral Hopper was a brilliant computer scientist whose contributions to the field are responsible for many of the modern computing advancements that we take for granted today. It's a true pleasure to be here today to recognize the progress of our campaign for the continued preparation and education of the Brigade of Midshipmen. For all of us on the Foundation Board, for our colleagues among the Alumni Association leadership and the hundreds of alumni and friends who have supported the Center for Cybersecurity Studies and Hopper Hall over the past few years, today is truly a celebration of the realization of a long-term, long-held dream of the culmination of the extraordinary public-private partnership. A new beginning where our midshipmen and their professors will embark on the important work of engaging in the cyber domain in a facility that matches the sophistication and questions and challenges that they'll face in their career in the defense of this nation. Admiral Hopper was an unreservedly fierce advocate for our nation's youth. She believed in giving young people the space and the room to explore and develop new revolutionary ideas while they were less constrained by the rules and norms that come with age. She believed in investing in the training and the future of our youth to preserve the future of our nation. And Admiral Hopper, if you're listening, I believe that your building will allow us to do just that. We're standing in the lobby of Hopper Hall. This is the, um, the main lobby of the building and it connects out to the terrace deck. Right now it's being used for virtual classroom space, but we call this the bridge. This is the central hub of the building and to the, the river view, which was really important as we planned how the building sat on the site and how it connected to the things around it. When we were first coming up with the plan for the building, we looked at the buildings around this site very carefully. They're all from the 1970s. They were designed by a very famous architect, John Carl Wernicke. When Wernicke was designing those buildings, he was looking back at Bancroft Hall. So you start to see how the building fits into the campus and even across the historic campus, how it fits into the scale and massing of all of the buildings here and reflects the continuum of Naval Academy architecture across those years. Today, the Naval Academy has a robust cyber education program. Every midshipman takes two mandatory classes, one as a plebe and another one as a junior. And we also have a cyber operations major, which is both ABET accredited and recently announced as a center of academic excellence by the NSA. Grace Hopper actually spoke to my plebe class about the importance of information in, in technology advancement in the Navy. Trying to explain how information moves between satellites, ships, etc. She came up with a very ingenious uh, description was this is how far data can move in, an, in a nanosecond. Now we give these out to midshipmen to explain to them the Hopper legacy, but also to keep in mind the, how technology can be used um, both as a leader and then as a, a person that's using technology to their advantage. Before Hopper Hall opened, all the cyber classes were basically spread throughout the academy and they had to be retrofitted with technology. Now the labs have been specifically for technology and advancements of technology. And also in the space, we actually have a classified research area where we can now do discussions of cyber and other topics that, at a level we weren't able to do before. So here on the fourth floor, we have the war room, which is affectionately called the Class of 1962 Cyber Science War Room, supported by Corbin and Doris McNeil. This room was built specifically with the midshipmen training in the cybersecurity field, primarily our competition team. I'm standing in front of uh, the NSA's annual trophy that they give for cyber competition amongst the service academies, which we've won a number of times the past several years, very impressive of the midshipmen. Here on the fourth deck, we have the Kaiser Classified Education and Research Facility, which is also called a SCIF, a Sensitive Compartment Information Facility. This is the first of its kind at the Naval Academy. It's unique in that it'll be a classified space. We'll be able to go into a higher level discussion about what is really going on behind the scenes. What is the Russians really doing? When the president or FBI announces uh, warrants or subpoenas for uh, international actors, what's behind that? 
So we'll use the classified space for a whole range of lectures, courses, electives, and professional development that will impact the entire brigade and midshipmen. Right now, we are in what is called the Joint Cooperative Unmanned Systems Integration Facility, or the Jacuzzi, here in the basement of Hopper Hall. And sitting in the Jacuzzi is the Surface and Underwater Robotics Facility, the SURF. Uh, so the SURF is a pool that is instrumented below the water and above the water to do motion capture for robotics. And it can allow us to cooperate between aerial, surface and underwater vehicles. It allows us to do inside the building what could only be done in the field. We have lighting that is adjustable spectrum so we can change the intensity and the temperature of the light to mimic different times of day and different environmental conditions. So that when the students are doing computer vision they're able to understand the challenges that they'll face in the real world. But we can do it in a controlled fashion. Overhead, we have a two-ton crane system with a powered lift that allows us to bring vehicles from the entryway to the pool, drop them in, do ballasting, do a few kinematic studies, lift it back out and take it back out to a marine lift, which would carry it across to the water and put it into the actual Severn. We're in the Aerial Robotics Testing and Mission Facility, the Artemis Lab, and it comprises a control room and an aerodrome. The aerodrome is segmented into two pieces, one of them for learning how to fly and one of them for flying larger and more complex missions with a little bit less forgiveness for errors. This room, like the surf and the jacuzzi, is equipped with a motion capture system and adjustable spectrum lighting. The idea here is that we want them to learn how to fly well before we put them above the water. We are in the Gamma Lab, it's a makerspace that is equipped with 3D printers, laser cutters, 3D scanners, printed circuit board fabrication facilities, and all of the tools and equipment that students need to take an idea from a concept through an initial prototype. Students are able to learn how to use these new manufacturing technologies here inside this space and carry that information out into their career in the Navy and Marine Corps. 3D printing, as an example, is making fundamental changes to the way that we do supply chains so that individual components can be manufactured on site rather than being kept in warehouses and shipped as needed. They can be manufactured on a ship uh, or even in space and then placed into service immediately. We are in the robotics laboratory and while mobile robotics, ground vehicles, drones, underwater vehicles, are handled in the jacuzzi and the surf and the Artemis downstairs. This lab is dedicated to robot manipulation, the use of robot arms to pick up and manipulate objects and interact with the world, as well as how they sense the world and extract information from it. I'm Hatem el Bidwehi. I'm an associate professor at the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. We are here in the microfab lab. Uh, we see behind us here two projects that are currently used by students, Trident and Bowman Scholars. This one here on my right is using acoustic waves to control the motion of particles on a silicon plate on the micro scale. And this one here is using magnetic fields to control the motion of magnetic particles. We also have a new clean room in Hopper Hall. Compared to what we had in Recover, this is, uh, has higher classification. So it's more appropriate to use with micro-scale device fabrication. Compared to what we had before, we can only go on the milliscale, so we can go smaller. And I would like to point out the MoCo Lab, that silver function generator in the middle here, was donated to us through the foundation. We got many of those uh, to use in research and teaching. This is the prototyping lab. It's a new facility for ECE. We didn't have this in recovery before. Uh, just like in robotics, uh, we have a way now to 3D print or to use a printed circuit board manufacturing. We also have a laser cutter and we have the old-fashioned kind of machine tools for the students to build their circuits, build enclosures for them and be able to fit everything in that device that they are trying to build for their capsule. We are in the photonics, optics, electronics and materials lab. What we have here is a project related to the interplay between magnetics and optics. 
We have a sample levitated on a magnet array and we use the laser power to control its motion wirelessly. Another example of a project that is supported by this lab is radiation detection. We 3D print these scintillator materials which convert radiation to light and then we can detect the light through electronic circuits to give the user an indication whether there is radiation in the area or not. My name is Captain John Stevens. I'm the department chair for the electrical and computer engineering department. This is the power lab. We have the student section for classes that require power and energy discussions, motors and generators. About halfway through in the lab here, we have uh, workbenches for our capstone students. And these students are doing their senior design projects. We're looking at an expanded capability for our lab. In the design of the building, we have the capability of bringing the power from the roof down to the power lab. And we would have it in this section here where the, uh, the raw power from the solar and wind energy systems will come down here, will condition the power with various power converters. The other thing that they'll be able to do is store the energy in battery systems. And the expansion of our capability is certainly in the way of renewable energy uh, and pulse energy systems uh, for, again, to keep pace with the technical demands of the, the Navy and the Marine Corps. This floor has a small academic component, which is some physics labs. There are two large telescopes on the roof. One is in a domed coverage, which opens to the night sky, and then there's a smaller radio telescope. They will be installed shortly during the course of the next six months. The rest of this floor is mechanical. We pulled the mechanical equipment up out of the floodplain and put mechanical equipment up here, essentially on the roof. We just walked into the Valgeno Conference Center. This is the main banquet and conference space for the building. It'll be used for a wide variety of academic and special events, visiting lectures, commissioning events. There's the ability to serve a meal associated with the event, so there's a large catering space associated with it. We really liked the ability to take advantage of this view. 